Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike from Mobox, and you'll notice that we are already in After Effects. What the heck's going on? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I render things out in After Effects. So there's gonna be a couple settings that I'm gonna show you and a couple little tricks. So hopefully you learned something new. If you are working on a project right now and you need help rendering, we're gonna go ahead and get right started into this just so um, I can help you out as soon as possible. So first of all, okay, here we are. We're in After Effects and I've got an alpha layer. That means that this is an overlay that I wanna put onto a video. I want the video to show in the background when I render this out and I use this in Premiere Pro or whatever other software I'm using. So first off, um, this is pretty long, 12 seconds. I don't need this to be 12 seconds. This bar here is my render area. I don't need to render out 12 seconds of this. I only need to render out four seconds of this. I'm just gonna go to four seconds and hit N on the keyboard or I could drag this, but holding, pressing N on the keyboard is just a little bit faster. So we're gonna go up here in composition, add to render queue. And you'll see here that there are some settings. This was a previous project I rendered. I'm just gonna delete that. I don't need that. It's not necessary. Um, but what you see here is we have best settings and we have lossless. So we're gonna go ahead and click lossless and see what kind of settings we could use in here to reduce this for the file size. And so that way we could preserve that alpha layer. So you're gonna need QuickTime. QuickTime is a setting that allows you to use PNG and alpha channels. So I'm just gonna select QuickTime, come up to format, and it's already on PNG. For you, it might be on H.264, but you wanna set this to PNG. I'm just gonna hit okay. By the way, that was in this box here that I, that I went and changed that setting. For channels, I'm just gonna click this and go down to RG, RGB and alpha. What that does is it preserves the background. Now, if you're rendering this kind of stuff for YouTube or um, for other compositions, for YouTube, then these settings will be fine. If you're doing this on a professional level, you might want to use higher end codecs, but for us on YouTube, um, this will be perfectly fine. So just a quick tip here is if you hit this little triangle down right here, you could make this a template. So when you make this a template, you could name it to whatever you want. You could name it alpha if you'd like. Um, and you see it, it saved your settings here and you could hit okay and save it as a template. That way next time, all you have to do is hit this arrow and select select that there so that way you never need to redo that and it and it's always there also this is how you change the name and destination of the file output to you could select this and let's say you want it on the desktop you could name it um tutorial 17a and if you'd like you could save that and then render it out like that okay so we're back and it finished we're just going to come into our premiere pro um i guess composition here and we're going to go ahead and drop the file in so I'm just gonna go to the destination where I saved the file and um, I actually rendered it out twice. I'm just gonna drag the first one on and you'll see here that it preserved the alpha layer behind. So that way I could use this as a lower left. I could select this and I can move it and, and shape it down, let's say to that size and move it down in the lower left corner. Just like that. And you see there that it, that it did preserve the background. So let's dig into some other settings that we could do here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these. You don't need to do this. I'm just doing this for sake of ease so you could understand what I'm doing and, and there's not too much clutter on the screen. Let's say for example, I, I, don't need, I don't need an alpha channel in the background. Let's say we just have a picture of a cat in the background and, and let's pretend that this makes sense even though it doesn't, okay? So let's just say that, that we just need to render this out for some reason, four seconds is long enough. Let's say it's only two seconds just to make our composition render a little bit faster. So we're just gonna go again to composition, add to render queue, and you could render this out in AVI lossless settings if you want. It'll be really high quality, but the file will just be really big. So a setting that I like to use is I like to click on lossless, go to QuickTime again, and in format options, change this to H.264. Hit okay, and leave this on RGB. That way we're gonna get, we're gonna get really, uh, really good settings here. The file sizes won't be too big and um, you know the, the file will look pretty good and, and it won't have an alpha layer and it'll render really fast. So we're just gonna hit okay here. We could change the destination again. I always name things A's and B's. So I since an alpha layer, I name it A. For non-alpha layers, I name it B, beta. There's no reason, but that's just, that's just how I do it. That's how I keep track of, of especially certain parts. If, I'm, if it's a multi-part section and one's an alpha layer and one's a beta layer, I name it, a, I call it a beta layer. It's not really called a beta layer. Um, I just name it B. So 
hit save. And again, I can click this and make this a template and I have, I have it as an alpha, I've got a beta, and then I also have PNG here. So again, if you render this out, it goes really fast. No need to do a hard cut. Um, it renders out really fast. We're just gonna come back into the Premiere, the Premiere uh, composition and I'm gonna drag this one in. So you'll see here that that when, when when you don't preserve the alpha layer or when you just have a solid background, this this is the, that that's what it, that's what you get. It's a hard cut over to that. So those are the two uh, render settings that I use. The last one I'm going to show you is to render just a still image. So sometimes if let's say you need this, let's say let's say you're using this for a composition and you also want this to be a a thumbnail, for example. You can come over, you can come down here and you could drag this close. So what this does is now you only have one frame. You only have one frame of in the render queue. So when you add this to the render queue, you could change this to, um, let's see here, let's say PNG sequence. So you hit PNG sequence, RGB plus alpha. If you need the alpha layer, you can. Otherwise, you could just do RGB. I do RGB plus alpha just because sometimes there's an alpha layer, sometimes there's not. And it's easier for me to just create one um, one render setting and save it as a template than create multiple. So I'm just going to hit RGB plus alpha. The format options, leave alone. Hit OK. And then go ahead and make sure I save this as a template, which I have here, PNG Pro V2. Again, you click on this setting and and you, you could you could name it here. You hit OK. And by the way, you could do this with more than one frame. You could do this with 100 frames, and it'll render 100 frames. Um, but for the case of maybe a thumbnail, you might only need one frame. So you hit Render, and it renders really fast. And you now can go to your destination folder. You'll see that there's a folder that it creates. If you have multiple frames that, that, that you rendered, this will be full of frames. But since we only rendered one, we have one, and it's just a still image, as you can see there. So you can then open this in, let's say Photoshop or GIMP or whatever, and um, even Paint, you could open it up in Paint. This is just an image, it's a PNG file image. So I hope that this helped. Those were the render settings that I use. I hope I didn't go too fast, but if you are in a rush and you're trying to render something out and you can't figure it out, maybe fast is what you're looking for. So if you did enjoy this video, give it a like, subscribe, make sure you follow me. Um, I upload new tutorials every Wednesday at about 6 a.m. West Coast time. So anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.